All right, all right, all right. Billy the Artist here, back with a new how to draw lesson. And from the opening three words, today's lesson is going to be Matthew McConaughey. And here we have a piece of A4 paper. Again, I'll be using the trusty 2B pencil and I will as talk uh, all the way through as I do in these real live lessons. And I will also probably be, well, maybe using a 4B pencil and an 8B pencil. And I try and make things as simple as possible. Now I will also use a technical pencil. Uh, this is a 0.5 and I've also got a 0.35. And this has got a 2B lead in. And I'm going to use these because of Matthew's glasses. Now, it's just so as I've got a consistent line because the 2B pencil will wear down. But this paper is A4 paper. So that's 21 centimetres by 29.7, 210 millimetres by 297. It's standard smooth cartridge paper. People have asked me in the comments on the videos, it's like, where do I get the gridded paper from? You draw the grid on yourself. Again, link in the cards in the description to a video that shows me actually laying this grid down in real time so that you can learn how to do that for yourself. So again, check that out and that will help you lay this grid down. It can take you 10 to 20 minutes to actually do it, but it's just smooth cartridge paper. Now, I also use shapes, again, the How to Draw Anything Part 1. I will, rather than just going straight in with the drawing line, I will do the basic shapes that help you to put the image down completely onto the paper as if you were doing it freehand drawing and it's just by placing shapes and, and but using the grids I use the grid as a reference point because when you're freehand drawing you would use say say you've got a vase in front of you and it's on a table and there's things behind you would use the reference of the line of the back of the table and things that are on the wall as a point to actually place on the page. So the items around would be your grid. And you can even get grid viewers for landscapes when you're out drawing live. And so using the grid is a simple technique. Now these grid marks are two centimeter, 20 millimeter intervals. So it starts in the corner and goes over. So it's two, four, six, eight, all over, but I've named them A to J and then one to 14 down the left hand side. Now, that way we can then go E5 and it's like battleships or H8. And that's where you go and you use that as your reference point to place your pencil and start your drawing. Now you can go straight in and do the line immediately, but I'm going to do the shapes first because it really, really helps. And it's just great because you then see the image and the drawing develop from beginning to the very end. So again, with the, the techniques, I'll be using the putty eraser and the Mars plastic. These are just standard erasers that I get. Uh, for blending, I've got a blending stump, a piece of kitchen towel, tissue paper. You can also use a paintbrush. Uh, but again, just the erasers. Find what works for you. But I will explain these techniques to you as we go along. So, here we go, all right, all right, all right, with Matthew McConaughey. Now we're gonna start, and we're gonna start with the basic shapes. I'm gonna do these a little bit light. Now the grid as well, I draw this on with a 2B pencil. I actually use a technical pencil, so the line is consistent. And I draw them on very dark. You can draw them on light, that will help. Now we're here on E5. I'm just drawing the little rectangle above the line and it just kind of comes over and that's the bars on Michael's glasses. Now coming down from E down to 7 we've got a kind of triangle shape and then on the inside of E kind of halfway over to D and that's his nose and then underneath we've got another triangle now I'm doing this kind of light and that's the bottom of his nose and then the mouth actually on the eight line that comes over I've done that a little bit hard so I'm just going to remove that line quickly 
it's actually on the late line fairly horizontal is Matthew's upper lip and then we've got it's like a slice of lemon a semicircle coming round underneath and then it comes up past the F line and joins under now I'm just going to leave that nice shape now we're going to draw a box and this is coming out between the G and the H halfway so we draw the edge down and then we come over to where the nose is and it goes over the top of the five line and that's going to be the outside of Matthew's glasses now above the six we've got another little box and a little rectangle going off which is the arm going up to the H and that's the hinge on the edge of Matthew's glasses so we draw the box over for the right side of his glasses and here you can see we've got a D shape on the on the D line if you see a D shape and that's the lens itself and the rim of his glasses and so on this side it's going to be a C shape and that helps make the actual curve in the corner point and you can see inside we've got little triangles little shapes there now we bring the curve over the line it's got to be in line with the bottom of the left lens and the rim of his glasses and that comes up just to the right of the B so I'm drawing a horizontal line and that's another little kind of square and then between five and six on the B we've got the hinge and that's about starts at the halfway and that's there and then you can see the arm you've got a highlight you've got a little beam going back now for Matthew's eyes so inside here we have Matthew's eye I'm just drawing a rectangle that goes between the C and the D and his right eye is thinner than his left eye and the rectangle comes past the D line it kind of ends on the C line inside where the corner is and then we want a little circle inside kind of semicircle that's going to be Matthew's iris and pupil of his eyeball now for his left eye again kind of halfway so halfway between five and six and it comes over to the left of the F and comes all the way over you've got the point right on the corner over here and then it kind of comes halfway where his tear duct is on this side now I'm going to draw a kind of semicircle inside and that's the upper eyelid with his eyelash on how that comes over again I'm doing the same on this side inside the rectangle now we want his iris and pupil again and that goes from the F line to halfway now I'm drawing this softly and gently and you can see it's just appearing and some people have said oh it doesn't show up well that's your monitor or screen or whatever you're viewing this on because I've checked on my monitor all the time and it always looks fine so check the settings on your monitor if these pencil lines aren't showing because when I do the full portrait drawings that take a couple of days so I can't do a lesson they are very faint and I don't do darker lines but when I do the outline this is going to be darker so now we want a rectangle above for Matthew's left eyebrow and that's to the goes over the G and through the F and then the same we've got between C and D we've got a little 
rectangular shape and that's his eyebrow over the top now his bottom of his chin we're just going to do a curve for this one so it's like a big u shape coming around what we're going to do is we're going to draw from the hinge and the bar going from the hinge between five and six on the h and you can see how that comes down to eight to about there so we can just draw a line a straight line and then you can see that it starts to curve around and then we've got a little triangle here on g9 so you can see a little triangle of flesh there and then it carries on over to the halfway point here and you're using the grid as almost a kind of dot to dot and it comes over and his chin line is just underneath goes diagonally on the E and curves around and comes up and then we want it to come up on the 10 between C and D about halfway and then it just got a slight curve and when it comes to the C9 it's just on the outside now again we've got this kind of you can see this U shape but it's <clears throat> so big we can't just use a big square or something so we're just putting the carefully using the grid line to put in Matthew's jawline because it is so large we may as well do this nicely straight off and that curves up and then here between six and seven you've got Matthew's ear so that curves off and this is a kind of you can see there's a triangle shape so that's nice and simple so now what we want is Matthew's forehead so between C and G we just want a nice line coming over and that's the kind of basic line for the top of his forehead and you can see it's just a giant box so we can draw the line down here coming down to the glasses and then we've got a diagonal coming off and the hair goes up again here on this side you can see we've got a nice diagonal triangle shape there for Matthew's hair but it becomes a bit of a box so we can see going up just underneath the one you've got a rectangle shape and that's Matthew's hair coming down on the side and then here on the E we can go up and we've got two kind of triangle shapes this comes over to the G comes over to the side right the way close to the eye so you've got a nice triangle shape there and that's the top of his hair on the edge of the picture of his head and his portrait now again coming down here from the eye we just want a nice triangle and you've got a triangle of light of his hair there and then another triangle coming down and this is his tousled hair that's just falling down and cascading and then we've got another box so coming down here below the six line we've got we want another triangle of light we can bring that out further so we've got another box of hair there and then here we can see we've got a triangle coming down from just inside the eye there's a triangle shape and then we want another box of hair coming at the bottom there's a little rectangle and again it's just using shapes to build that up rather quickly so again now on Matthew's right hand side of his hair little rectangle and then we've got a little kind of inverted V shape there as the hair starts to just curl a little and then a little triangle there little box there you've got a diamond you can see a diamond shape caused by the hair and then another little box there and then we've got this lovely curl 
coming down onto his collar and there you can see it's like the number two so this is again using shapes you can see there a number two shape there's the curl over and there's the bottom of the two and then it kind of goes out a little bit further but then you've got the collar that's just a nice simple triangle that comes down below the 12 and then goes up between C and D and then you've got the triangle going up and that's the collar and then you've got his shoulder diagonal line coming over between the nine and we've got more of his hair coming off on the side and we've got that nice piece that kicks out so here you can see we've got very good large basic shapes and we've nearly got the format the under drawing down just of the basic shapes so again this collar the left hand collar comes out comes down to the 13 line about halfway and it's a bit of a triangle shape and then we've got another you've got a d shape here as it curves over and goes back on it so you just got that nice little d shape with a v at the bottom as that curves and then the edge of the shirt with the buttonholes in again you just got this nice ribbon shape that comes down and gone that's down to the no i've only gone to the 12 that should be down to the 13. so we come down to the 13. just didn't go far enough yep just checking so we've got the edge of the neck like i say that's the edge of the collar we need the edge of matthew's neck coming off and it comes off the nine so you can see here using the G line we've got a triangle and it just comes down over two squares so I'm just gently putting that line in and then this is where the collar comes out from and then we want that D shape back down here now below the 10 coming out underneath this little rectangle that we put in for the bottom of Matthew's hair it comes over and you've got the top of his left shoulder now here we've got a kind of leaf shape <clears throat> so as we come off the 12 between G and H you can see here we've got a leaf shape that comes over comes down comes around so you just got that kind of nice leaf shape and if we follow that down we've got another you see an almost like just slightly curved triangle like a claw and then you just got a little ellipse and that's the buttonhole and then a little buttonhole there a little rectangle as we come over just inside the D between 11 and 12 we have a little ellipse and you've got a little kind of triangle there that's the edge of the shirt with the button on it and then we want to bring this down slightly diagonal comes all the way down to the bottom and then just on the 14 line we've got another ellipse just to the right of the D and that's that second button and then here off the C line from the collar you can see we've got this lovely triangle you can see we've just got this fantastic triangle and that's the fold in the shirt so again we can indicate another semicircle slice of lemon inside and that's the inside of Matthew's mouth that we can then build up on but that is using boxes very simply to create an outline that we can then build upon it's a basic underdrawing for the full outline to go down on top of in the next section
Now I'm going to use this technical pencil so as I get a consistent line and this is I'm going to try the 0.5 because it's a little bit thicker. Uh, I'll try yeah no I'll try the 0.35 first I'll see what that's like and we're going to do the rim the outline of Matthew's glasses and the reason I'm going to use this is I want this crisp highlight afterwards and this pencil will stay the same thickness whereas when you use the trusty 2B pencil that will blunt down and you end up with a fatter line so purely for this I'm going to use this you just need to keep sharpening your pencil now I did technical drawing at school a long time ago and we didn't even have these we had to keep sharpening pencils all the time and then sanding the tip to a fine point now we're going to start it's going to be like a giant dot to dot we've got the line inside already for us so we've got the grid but we've got the box and the shapes that we've already put in so i'm going to start with the left hand lens and you can see we've got this c shape and it starts between e and f on the five and this comes down comes to the bridge of the nose and then it comes down and we've got this lovely curve and it comes down the side of his nose and even with this like I do with the 2B pencil I'm turning it so that it stays sharp now the bottom is between F and G and you've got that curve that comes around and it starts to go back up now I'm going to do from G just above the 5 we've got this D shape that comes all the way down so I'm going to work from the top to join it and you can see how it comes out and curves down to the halfway point we've got that lovely shape it curves down and then comes down through the six and then starts to curve around to join that line now as it comes through right on just above right on the G line just above the five we've got a highlight and you can see it's just a little bit thicker so the top of the line and I'm doing these quite dark is lower there than it is here so it's just diagonally kind of going up and the light kind of blooms so we've just got a nice curve and then we want the curve to come round to the halfway point and that's where you can see the, the line would carry on going and we want that bloom inside and that's above just above the five line and then the rim goes right on the corner point of G5 And then we're just going to follow the line all the way around inside. Now we've got a nice darker line inside and it seems a little bit thicker on this side. Again if I was using the 2B pencil this would be I would have had to sharpen the pencil repeatedly so this is just allowing me to draw a little bit faster for you guys so you can see the drawing develop now this comes over the inside to the halfway point now if we do the same on the right hand lens 
we can see how inside the glasses and this shows how you can do just using the grid as a kind of dot to dot so we're now going to do the inside of the lens first and then the outside because that's right on that corner point and so that comes up and you can see we've got this kind of V so it comes up a little bit and then comes across slightly coming down to the C line and then it just starts to cross the five at about a third way over and you can see how it just continues to come round we need to be on the inside of the box that we drew and then that curves through the six and starts to come out and around and we've got a C shape here And then again, we've got the lowest point is just to the right of the C line. And then it wants to start curving back up again. So we'll go up to the top and then we'll draw the D and bring it round to match and meet. Or even meet and match. So we want the D to about nearly half, halfway is there so we need to push that over curve and then we've got this little triangle that's just below the halfway point then you can see how it curves over to touch you can see how you've got the slight diagonal now I'm going to do the same but I'm going to do the outside line I'm just going to follow the line that we've already drawn a similar distance all the way around to make the rim of Matthew's glasses and that way we have a nice consistent line so if you, you can even get these very very cheaply you don't have to get a very expensive one I think these are about ten pounds uh, there's lots of makes but you can get get them relatively cheaply as well this is a Faber-Castell the same as the pencils that I'm using but I've also got Stettler ones and they're the blue ones that you see me use in the videos so now we've got the top where you've got the kind of highlight bloom and here we've got a V it's a nice simple little V shape and then we've got the top bar that comes over and joins above the five line and again where it's kind of welded on the bar to the rim you've got this little kind of V shape there and then right on the five line we've got the lower part of the upper structural bar and then that comes over and you've got a V in the corner and then you've got that curve that comes down and then we've got this bar over his nose which is above the halfway point slight curve to where it touches and the top of the bar and now you've got the rims so now we're just going to put the edge part on of the hinge the front part of the hinge where it joins is on joins on the edge of the rim again you've got that little rectangle that you put again it's just like a nice kind of D shape then you want the rectangle going up into Matthew's hair and there you can see we've got a triangle and that's the shadow and there's a triangle that comes in off that bar again on the side we come over it's a little bit high and this comes over 
the B line. And again, you've got that edge there. So now I will come back and use the normal Oh, hang on. There we go. Uh, the catch tree wasn't in fully on my pencil sharpening. So now we're going to put Matthew's eyes in. So if we start with, we'll start with his left eye. So you can see here, kind of on the halfway point, we've got this curve that comes around. Oh dear, just dropped the pencil. <laughs> that was actually it had the creases in his cheek, but we'll just remove that for now because that was an accident. Uh, I just dropped the pencil. So, back to just using a normal pencil. Now again, you could use the propelling pencil, the technical pencil for the whole lot. We got this little curve that comes under and it's about to the two third point and it curves and comes up through the F line and then you've got a little rectangle to halfway and that's Matthew's tear duct and then we want the curve of the line with his eyelash coming up and over and then that comes down and goes to the edge and then we want the crease of his upper eyelid right in over the top then the edge of his iris we got the curve it's just a nice U shape that comes down And that's the edge. Now we've got two little highlight points so I'm just gonna do two little circles to allow them to stay and then you've got Matthew's pupil right in the center. I've just drawn that a little bit darker and I'm just putting in the lighter tone of his iris just so, pun intended, you've got something to focus on. This, this is why I tend to start with eyes. You can start anywhere. You can start with an ear, top of the head, it doesn't matter. But I like doing the eyes so that there is a focus when I'm doing, say, a time-lapse video. There's the lines for his creases and then the bag under his eye. You've got a crease that comes right the way over. Then you've got a little curve shape down that's the crease coming off the nose so if we come over and it is pretty horizontal to his left eye you've got the right eye and that's about the halfway point so we want the curve and his right eye is thinner than his left eye and you've got that curve of the lower eyelid and it comes to inside the c-line and then you've got this triangle on the end kind of lower down just comes up goes over so you've got this kind of little v point there his left his right eye on the left hand side of the paper as we're looking at it and then it comes over the top and it goes over and then just starts to kick down just inside the D-line. You got the kind of dark and then we want a little curve for the iris. And we've got a solid highlight in the center point. 
and then Matthew's pupil. Again, I'm just lightly drawing in the grain. That's the only detail. The rest, we're going to do the, the full outline. Now, I'm drawing these lines quite dark. I want the curve of the crease above the top. It goes up in the eye socket, and then you can see there's a curve that comes down inside the lens. And we've got this kind of V and the line comes under and then on the top of his cheek now they are the simple lines around Matthew's eyes we've got a strong highlight reflected in his glasses and then there's a rectangle of light there, one there, and then one above the right eye. And we'll pull more of that out with the putty eraser a little bit later. So now that's the glasses just started to look out at us. Now we're going to put the nose in. So we're down on D7. We just got a little C shape and that curves down to about halfway. And then you've got the nostril just inside that. And you can see how that's in the middle of where the, between the edge of the eye and the lens and the frame. And then the center of the bottom of his nose got this V here so that just curves up goes up to where that nostril is and then going up to the left nostril just comes over and lines up with this side and you've got it it just comes over and then about two-thirds you've got the edge of the nose where it touches his cheek and then that curves now we can just indicate little bit of the highlight and the shape of the nose little curve there a C we got a little triangle line there now coming down from F7 we've got his cheek crease on this smile and that curves comes out and you've got the real corner there so you've got like a little D shape there that comes over the eight line And then where I drop the pencil, we can just indicate the crease in his cheek, the little dimple crease. And now we're going to go for Matthew's lips. So we're going to start from F, just past the F, and we've got this side. His lips come over, and it just comes down underneath the E again we'll rub all of this out and you've got the little dent in the top of his lip in the middle that comes down then goes up touches the eight line I'm using this paper as well to stop my hand from smudging all the pencil that's on the paper already it's just a simple technique to use then we curve out to the edge and it's about a third as it comes out. Then we want the lower part, the lower line of his upper lip. We've got the V just inside the E line. That's where the bottom is. And so it comes over, joins the lip, and then goes out and joins that corner. Now, the edge of his mouth comes down. You see how it curves around and the bottom is on the nine line just inside the E. And then it starts to curve back up and goes up past the F line. 
Now, this one, we've got some teeth showing over the top, but we've got the lip does curve around and comes through the E. So it curves down. We've got a solid line here. I'm just twisting the pencil, so I've got a sharper line. And it curves. We've got the bottom part here, and then it starts to curve up. It goes up through the D line and joins just past. And then we've got that shadow, nice shadow line there. Now, Matthew's two front teeth, the left one is right on the E line. So again, you just you can see we've just got little squares, little rectangles. So there's the first tooth. Put the curve of the shape on. The second tooth kind of comes over just inside the halfway line. And then you've got two more teeth and then a third that crosses the D line. So we can put the shape of the third in and then we can put the line in halfway for the two teeth and you've got the curve going up, comes down, comes under. Then you've got the incisor so you've got a little V there and then a little curve up at the top. And then on the left hand side of Matthew's mouth we've got four teeth from here to here so you've got the four teeth so we've got two slightly larger ones so you can push them over a little bit so we put a line there we've got a larger gap and then halve it and then you've got a kind of teardrop shape that goes up touches the lip comes down and then we've got a, again another teardrop shape that comes down. That's the incisor. You've got the V that touches the lip. And that goes up slight angle. It's not vertical. And then we've got a narrower teardrop shape. And then another one. And then there's one in the dark that goes over the F line. Now, we've got his teeth underneath at the bottom. We've got little lines just with the centre of his two front teeth and then we've got three that come out past here. So if we draw the outside of that one we know we've then got two so we can just put two little simple lines in. Little line underneath there, little U shape and that's Matthew's tongue. And that's looking pretty good. Now we've got this crease line that comes down its cheek through the C8 point. I'm just gently bringing that down and it comes down. That's just a diagonal line. And then the corner of his mouth, again you can see we've got this C shape here. I'm just indicating where that line is and then the corner of his mouth we've got one there and that goes over. So there we've got a little u-shape and that's the center of his upper lip below his nose. Now we want his jaw line coming down and I'm going to start from the rim of his glasses. You can see how it just comes down and curves across and then this comes across and actually hits just below C9. We just want to follow the curve and then it slightly curves back out and comes just through the kind of halfway point on the 10 between C and D and then his chin starts to curve under. And then there's another line above so you can see how we've got that line that comes down and then the chin 
bottom of his chin curves around and we've got this line, this edge of his jawline on his chin comes up and then that goes up and joins that line going up there. Now, his jawline comes around and goes up about the halfway point on the G line between 9 and 10. And then that goes through the 9. We've got that nice curved line going up to his jaw and then the edge of his cheek going up to where the hair joins we've just got that kind of line of hair it kind of looks a bit like the bottom of his ear as well as it goes into his hair so now we're going to carry on and we're going to get the rest of the outline down we've got the side of Matthew's neck that comes down from between G and H on the 9 and comes down and crosses over just bends over just inside the G below 11 you see how that curves out now <clears throat> on the right hand side of his neck on C9 just inside we can see how this comes down and then just curves comes across the top of C10 and then comes over I've just got this kind of cotton wiggling again I'm doing these lines darker so that you can see them you can do them lighter yourself and then it crosses over kind of just above the halfway point on the D line and comes over touches down goes under the 12 <clears throat> kicks out to halfway and then we've got this just nice little curve on the cotton on the edge as that comes down then we've got the collar that comes off underneath and then this is going to come about halfway so we can bring that line over and then it curves and just drops underneath the 12 to the right of the B line and then the collar curves up cuts through the B line curves up to where that hair curls now the right shoulder got a little just kind of dink there and then we've got the hair line and the shape then we've got that fold there. Just bringing the paper back in so that I'm not resting my hand on the pencil lines that we've drawn. Now, G below the 10, between 10 and 11, the inside of the collar comes out, goes to the halfway point, comes down right to the edge. And then we can bring the edge of that collar up and you can see how it comes across and goes underneath that hair there. And then as the collar comes out, we've got this, like I say, you've got this kind of little D curve that comes over and comes down and just touches the 13. And then dips up and so you can imagine the top of the collar like the flat going up along there and that joins that edge and you can see here you've got the collar folded up underneath and you can see the underneath part and that's what's making that D shape there that nice little shadowed bit and then coming out from under the hair we've got a little wave of the left shoulder then we can bring this collar down and it comes right to the bottom of the G-line collar, well the edge of the, the button 
overlap part of the shirt from the collar. And then the inside of that comes down, comes across, cuts through the F to the bottom. And then we've got this, like I say, this little leaf bit. And so that just drops down through the 12 line and then we kick out, curves across, drops under and goes and joins the bottom down there going through the F line right to the bottom of the page. And then we've got this little crease inside. And here you can see just how you've got those two little lines. One goes down there and then one goes down and follows on the inside and that's that little crease inside. Now again we can indicate the shadow there if you wanted to but <clears throat> we can do that just as we shade in but we'll do that very very quickly that'll be expressive we're not putting the elements in the background we're only going to focus on the portrait so now we want to come and we're going to come up and we're going to just put a little little bit of definition a little line so we've got Matthew's eyebrows and they curve over the top and then here even though we've got the definition of the top of his eye socket his eyebrow kind of comes up and then comes over down there now we're going to go right to the top of his head between E and F and this is kind of quite a way up so it's even higher than the little triangles that we actually drew and we've got that little shape that cuts through E and F and then going from F to G that on the G point crosses through the line and you've got the hair going out now I'm drawing this in the way that you would brush hair you see you've got that highlighted bit from between F and G so that goes out, goes through the H, cuts through the two line, then goes through the I, comes out, down through the four, through to the five, and then it kicks out through the six. This is where his hair starts to really toozle and fall about. Now, from again up on the H between one and two, we can see we've got, I'm gonna draw a little triangle there quickly, but you can see how we've got the darker patch. So I'm just indicating the lines as the hair goes over. And then from the three on the H, you can see how that goes over to this line out on the edge. And there, <clears throat> between H3 and 4, we've got a little kind of rectangle of dark. And there's a rectangle that comes down where the bar goes through over his ear. And I'm just indicating quickly just the way his hair is cascading down. But looking and seeing where it goes and just indicating some quick lines that we can follow when we put the detail and shading in later. So just keep looking in the squares and you can see where the hair is actually going. That's just the hair, just all cascading, twirling and twizzling. And then we've got some out on the edge there. Now if we come back up to G2, we can see where we've got this curve that comes around. This is where his hair joins the side of his forehead and the top of his forehead. And it comes down below the four 
and then goes over the arm of his spectacles. Shades is cool shades. Are they prescription? I don't know. So we got you can see how the hair comes across. Now here right across the top going from G over towards F and E we've got the lines where the hair joins the scalp and they are kind of pretty vertical but on this side they just start going and bending over towards the right and then from E they start to be more diagonal going towards the left and that's the simple way that our hair goes as we brush it and so there we have the top of Matthew's head now we want to do the same down on this side so we've got the hair coming down so we've got a little diagonal a little triangle there and it kind of straightens up a bit just a little bit not as acute as between two and three but between three and four you've got a bit more of a straighter part and it comes out and then you've got this dark patch going right down to where the top of the highlight of the arm coming off the right hand side of his glasses is and then you've got the hair going into the side between three and four on the B we've got a kind of highlighted bit and then you've got the dark going up right from the corner that goes up and over and then again this is just the outline we're not really going to start fully shading and I just want to get the outline down now the very edge of his hair comes down from the two comes out just inside the halfway point between A and B on the three and then that comes down and then you can see how the line comes across and it comes to the six point so we can just draw a line six on the A and then on the seven this is where we've got this little V you got a little upside like it's almost like an upside down heart there but this is just how he's curls are just cascading down and so here you can see there's almost an S you got the, from the top there it comes down you've got an S shape and that's that big curl that goes out then you've got a D there and then a little bit of an upturned V I'm just indicating some lines so again here we've got that two that we drew in lightly that's that curl at the bottom little D with a kick at the bottom a C kick at the bottom and some lines there for the highlights now that's our main drawing down and now we need to get rid of the actual construction lines and the grid lines and then we can start shading up so I'm going to use the Mars plastic and get rid of I'm going to use the paper to hold this piece of paper to actually hold the paper because I'm rubbing quite hard to actually remove the grid lines as best I can now this you can end up rubbing out lots so just do the big areas with a rubber like this and then you need a finer rubber to do the finer points and you'll see that in a moment so again there you can see we can just completely erase all of those lines on his forehead and his cheek center of his nose then down on the neck in the sh 
shirt in the shirt collar and right down to the bottom of the shirt up the side again you can see me ha my hand now is really pressing on to stop the paper going in if you put your bare hand on the page you would be transferring grease from your hand onto the paper and you could end up with horrible smudge marks that you can't remove with an eraser again now I'm coming right over the top and this is another reason as well why I say when you put your grid on don't put the grid on very very heavily like I do I only do it so that you can see it instead do your grid lighter you could even use a 2H pencil but we'll draw it on lightly so only you can see it and in the video where I actually show you about laying the grid down I do draw some lines with a 2H pencil and you just cannot see them at all so I've use that which is large I've got the same this is a Mars plastic again but in a pen it's a bit thick but it's more controllable than this one and so now I can get inside the nose just cleaning it up inside the glasses close to the eye underneath the glass on his cheek and this gives me kind of closer more accurate erasing than I otherwise would have done with the large eraser but it just means I can work quickly and remove this so that you can see then the full drawing and this is just the outline that will then build up and you can see we've still got the grid in Matthew's hair so but there's a lot of detail actually in lot of lines actually in Matthew's hair but because they're only quick construction lines we can it doesn't matter if we lose some of them as I'm removing the bulk of the grid and even some that remain they will get overdrawn and then highlights they'll get rubbed out very very easily it's like there there's a solid line that's through the dark and it will disappear when we actually do the drawing the shading in of Matthew it's like there there's one right on his tooth then the construction line right over the top of his lip around the nose and still finding some in the shirt that's looking pretty good now so I say this all the time so I'm using the paper as a catch now off the pa off the screen so you can't see it I've just got a, an old brush this is really old it's an old two inch watercolor brush but I think I originally bought this to varnish paintings with a long time ago rather than using my hand that would smudge the page I can gently remove all of the spent eraser but I catch it on the paper or you use a piece of card and then it goes straight in the bin rather than on the floor again I can see now where I've still got more to go but I'm going to use this is the electric eraser that I've got 
and the spinning eraser at the end does the work for you. And so I'm just removing those grid lines that are in his eyes and in the lens. And this is great in his lips even. Because you've got real good control with this. That's really good. Again, we've got the numbers over the top, letters even, numbers down the side, letters over the top. And again, just brush off a little bit of raising that I did. And we are looking something like there we go oh all right all right all right that's looking pretty good ready for shading in